Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our evening's talk. Uh, it's Friday again, the day we like to meet together and, and talk with each other and listen to each other's views and questions. And uh, it's a lovely Friday today. It's uh, the 13th of November. Beautiful, beautiful day. Uh, I'd like to introduce my tech guy to my left here. Uh, as always, she's called Marion Wakai. She is uh, the, the, the guy who puts me online and removes me online. And it's up to her to make sure that you people hear me. Yeah, I just talk. Um, she works for something called She Chooses to Live Initiative, which is um, a forum for disseminating knowledge. Uh, knowledge matters reproductive health, both male and female. And uh, that's uh, what we like to do on, that, on this platform. We usually appreciate uh, questions and feedbacks and requests of talks that you want uh, covered. Anything with productive health, we shall try to accommodate. My name is Dr. Jen Wakahe. I'm an obstetrician gynecologist. Today I'm blessed I have delivered a little baby boy who is very, very lovely. So I'm a very, very happy doctor today. Uh, it's not every day you deliver a baby and, and feel them cry. It's a lovely thing. So anyway, I'm Dr. Wakahe, that's my, my joy is delivering babies, but my joy also is letting people know things so that they are able to make uh, uh, informed choices. And that's what this, this forum, I mean, this initiative, She Chooses to Live Initiative is all about. Uh, from all the way from adolescence to past menopause, anything woman, anything man, even with the adropause, <coughs> we would be willing to tackle. And today I haven't <coughs> drank much water, so. And I told you people, if you're over 60, you must, must drink water. There are no two choices about it. Then I also work for She Chooses to Live Initiative, and that's what we are here about today. Today we're going to discuss something that uh, is, is called the pap smear. My hope and actually prayer is that by the end of this talk, every one of you and your cousins and your aunties and your anything female uh, will go and get themselves done a pap smear because it's a, a, a completely vital something. Uh, it's, uh, it's absolutely necessary. So anyway, what is pap smear? Pap smear is one of the screening methods, the methods of screening for uh, any abnormalities in the cervix. It's one of many, there are quite a number, but perhaps Mia is, uh, it's been there a while and it is, it is um, one of the, the ones that bring out really good results. So it is good to do it. Um, it, is, it, it helps to look at the normality or the abnormality of the cervix and it is, it's a very important test indeed. Now, when I say cervix, what is the cervix? The cervix is the mouth of the uterus. It is, the uterus is like an upturned pot. And uh, when it is, uh, the, the lower part, when the open part is the cervix, and that's what we are talking about. And that's uh, where we do pap smear to find out any, any abnormalities about it. It is found inside the vagina, just at the top of the vagina. Uh, it's what allows menstruation to come through from the, the uterus out through the vagina and out. It is also the one that uh, keeps the baby closed inside when uh, the one is pregnant and finally allows the baby out uh, at during labor uh, when somebody delivers normally. So the cervix is a very vital organ and um, it's a very, very interesting organ. But it is prone to getting cancers of the cervix. Uh, and that is what really we have talked about cancer of the cervix before. Now, people get scared about doing pap smear for many reasons. 
uh, and uh, we want to try to demystify those reasons why people refuse to do pap smear. So what is cancer? I think I've said on this forum before that cancer are just normal cells. You are normal cell, my normal cells, your normal cells that start multiplying for a reason that is sometimes known, sometimes unknown. They just start multiplying in a very, very mad way. They start rapidly multiplying and growing and they, they, they grow and push the surrounding uh, organs around them. And sometimes they even will be will break and get carried away by either blood or by lymph to distant organs like the liver and like the, the, the lungs. So that, that is cancer. Normal cells that change uh, for whatever reason. There are many reasons why, uh, there are many associated reasons why cells will change into cancer but they, 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 they change and start multiplying very rapidly. Now, that's why cancer is so very, very dangerous because uh, usually if somebody gets a bacterial infection in the system, the body will know that that is a bacteria and try to fight it. But when it is cancer, cancer cells are just your cells that are a little bit altered. And so the body is uh, not, on, not able to very, very quickly note that they are bad cells and uh, uh, try to, to, to remove them from the system. The, the body only gets to know that they are bad cells when it is that uh, the, the, the cancer has grown so much that it's starting to eat into uh, the surrounding organs or it is starting to eat into, into the nerves that surround the area. That's the only time that you, the body notices there is a problem. Other is at the beginning, the body does not know uh, that there is a problem. Now, if we were to talk about uh, cancer of the cervix, some facts about it, and uh, I'm, I'm actually very passionate about cancer of the cervix because uh, for mainly for this one reason, that it is almost, almost 100% preventable. That's why I'm so very, very interested in cancer cervix because no woman, I keep saying, no woman ever need get cancer of the cervix because it's almost almost completely preventable. The other thing is that if it is caught early, it is totally, totally curable. Having said that, that is almost preventable and it's, it's curable, every two minutes somewhere in the world, a woman dies from cancer of the cervix, every two minutes. And in Kenya, every day, every single day, nine women die from cancer of the cervix. Now, this is not a, a, a very small number, and uh, it, it shouldn't happen. We shouldn't lose nine women every day because of a cancer that uh, is preventable. Now, what are the things that cause cancers? There are many things. The, actually, the, for other cancers, the causes are not known. They are said to be associated causes. Like if somebody undergoes a lot of irradiation, like if somebody uses some hormones, like a lot of smoking, they are also uh, found in familial genetically uh, 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 inherited and some drugs. So, so most of the other cancers, it is that they are association. But the thing about cancer of the cervix, this is the one cancer that we know what the cause is. And in 99.7% of all cervical cancers, the cause is something that is called human papilloma virus. And this virus is the, the associated with 99.7% of all cancers. Now, that's one fact. The second factor about uh, why it is almost possible to prevent cancer cervix is that the progression is known. Cancer cervix doesn't just start as cancer. It will start as a, a normal cervix that goes through some abnormal changes. And, and this will take several, several years for the, the change to finally become cancer. So it is, uh, it is, um, uh, it is possible to catch it at various stages uh, of pro progression and, and, and deal with it. Uh, cancer cervix is not inherited. It is actually not an inherited disease. Uh, it's not like the, 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 um, the, the breast or like the ovary where it is that uh, it is, and you can, 
you can, it runs in families and if your sister had breast cancer you are alert about breast cancer now cervical cancer is not inherited cervical cancer is an infection it is caused by an infection with human papilloma virus now what is human papilloma virus first of all it is a virus it is a sexually transmitted virus human papilloma virus is the commonest the commonest globally sexually transmitted disease of all sexually transmitted disease human papilloma virus is the the most common now if you take a, we not women people who are 50 years uh, age 80 percent of them who those of them who have been sexually active 80% of them have at some point gotten human papilloma virus. So it's a very, very common something. It's there. It's there all, all over the place. It's there. Uh, and there are many, many, many types of human papilloma viruses. In fact, many. They cause things like valve warts. They cause all kinds of things. But the ones we are interested in are the ones that cause cancer. And those are uh, just... Uh, out of the hundreds, there are 16 types of them, 16 varieties of the human papilloma virus that will, will affect the cervix and finally cause cervical cancer. Now, I said uh, it is uh, a sexually transmitted disease, and it is. Uh, it is not transmitted by the ejaculate through the penis or the, the, the fluid in the vagina. It's not. It is transmitted by skin-to-skin -skin contact. Uh, it is it is found in the skin area, not in the not in the um, in the ejaculate, which then means that even if somebody is using what we call protective sets, that is, they are wearing a condom, it will protect in a little way, but the rest of the area, the skin is exposed, so it is not possible to to protect. 100%. So condoms do not protect human papilloma virus 100%. Now, the, the, when somebody gets the human papilloma virus, then in about 80% of those people who are healthy and uh, fairly young, then uh, and their immunity is good. 80% of all infections will be kicked out by the system, by the body, by the body's immunity, and they will not have an infection any longer and those will go scot-free and once they catch it and they kick it out now they are they are immune to that particular virus so they will not catch it again but there is a 20 percent of people who are not able for whatever reason to by their own immunity kick out that that human papilloma virus and it's those 20 percent that finally will risk uh, at risk of, of getting the cancer of the cervix now, there are no symptoms at all to tell you that, they are, uh, that you have been infected by human papilloma virus. Definitely, there are no symptoms or signs to tell you that you have the 16 types that are bad. There are the other types which are not so very, very bad are the ones that cause uh, the warts, the genital warts. And those ones you, you can see, but the ones that cause genital warts are not the same ones that cause uh, cancer of the cervix. The ones of cancer cervix do not cause what, but they are, they, are, they are in the system, but they are also human papilloma viruses. So we have 16 of them uh, uh, that, that cause, uh, uh, the, the, that will change the cervix towards cancer. However, if somebody has genital warts, it is only fair that they also check for what, whether they have the, the types, the 16 types of human papilloma virus that are likely to to, to cause uh, now cancer cervix if left there long enough. Now, let's go actually to the pap smear. Who should, who should do a pap smear? Who is it that must, not really should, must do a pap smear? And that is anyone who has ever, ever been sexually active. And anyone who has ever, ever, had their genitalia into contact with another person. Now, having said that, uh, I know people will argue virgins may not get, but if a virgin has had heavy petting, they have had a chance to, to contact human, human papilloma virus. 
And this also actually goes for the people who, women who sleep with women, the lesbians, they can transmit to each other human papilloma virus, the 16, the type, the 16 types and even for the genital warts, and they can also uh, transmit to each other and then finally uh, develop uh, cancer of the cervix. So it means then that anybody whose genitalia have ever touched another person's genitalia, they stand a chance of having contracted human papilloma virus and uh, the human papilloma virus stands a chance of not having been eradicated by the, the immunity of the person. And so that person is at risk. So whoever has ever, ever had contact, genital contact with anybody else, they are the people who must do pap smear. And that is literally many, many, many people. It has nothing to do with age. It is, you can, if you have been, uh, in contact, I mean, if your genitalia have been in contact with somebody at age 10, you could actually get cancer cervix at age 18. We've had girls with cancer cervix at age 20, uh, which means they, they got into contact quite a bit early. Now, uh, how is pap smear done? Let's, let's demystify this thing because people are very, very scared. Why are people scared? People say that uh, it is and dignified, and and uh, yes, it is in a way because people do get to see your private parts, but your private parts are seen many a time, not not just during pap smear. So they say they don't they don't want to be undignified. Uh, women say that they do not want to be told that they have cancer, and that's the the most illogical argument I've ever heard because. You want to know whether you have cancer or not, and you want to know it in time, so that if you know it in time, it can be cured. It is curable. And pap smear is something that is done when you are not sick, which means you are doing it as a screening method. And when you do a screening method and it's not, there is no disease, and something is found, it means it is found early enough to be, to be curable. So uh, there should be no fear that you will be told you have cancer. Uh, there should be no fear that it will be undignified. There should be no fear of privacy invasion. Those are the kind of uh, reasons that we hear and that sometimes it's expensive. And believe you me, it's not expensive at all. Really, it's not. So how, how, how do you do a pap smear? First of all, it has to be a place you are quite comfortable. Like I said, there is quite a bit of exposure. So you have to be at a, at a, with, a, with a health provider who, with whom you are comfortable and it's got to be a private place. Uh, when you do get there, kindly confirm that you have emptied your bladder because it can be quite uncomfortable if you start doing a pap smear with a, with a full bladder. Then when you are with the doctor, they will usually, or the health provider, pap smear can be done by all kinds of people uh, as long as they, they have been trained to do it. So they will usually tell you to remove your underwear, your panty. Uh, and then uh, the, the, this is where people get feel exposed because we will usually tell you to fold your knees and open your knees apart and usually put your heels together, the feet touching each other, so that we are able to look very, very very openly into the vulva uh, and kindly at this point when you are told to do like this please please relax because this is where a lot of people feel uncomfortable about pap smear uh, it should be with somebody you are relaxed with it should be not hurried it should be a place where you are at peace and you know there is nobody going to pass around to see you so the, the other thing is that uh, there the will be a very bright light, uh, a bright light that sh is shining into your vulva, because ultimately we want to shine right into the vagina so that we are able to, to see the cervix when we, we, we get there. So your health provider will be wearing some gloves, some surgical gloves, and they will take something called a speculum. Uh, a speculum, they used to be metallic and very cold. But these days, believe you me, we have very nice ones which are plastic and they are different sizes. 
So you do not have to have a very big one inserted into your health provider. We'll kind of judge what size of speculum you need. And then we will have in a, in a te technical, in a nice technique and uh, prepare it. It is usually sterile. It is in a paper bag. They will unwrap it and then they'll usually put a, a lubricant to make sure that uh, the, the, the entry into your vagina is uh, not uh, very uncomfortable. And then they will insert the speculum. Now, once they, they insert the speculum, they will open the blades of the speculum. Uh, this is in an effort to, put the to keep the vagina wall apart so that we are able to visualize the cervix, which is uh, right uh, at the top of the cervix. So we, we need to visualize it because there is a, a place where, at which point of the cervix where a papilla is taken. So you are there, you are lying, you are usually talking with the health provider about many other things, but uh, a speculum is inside you. And then the health provider will take something like a brush, a very uh, not very aggressive brush, and they will brush your cervix. They, they will brush a, a place called the, the transformation zone, which is about half a centimeter inside the outside uh, of, of the cervix. When this is being done, please, please relax. That's the main thing. The, uh, relax. Uh, because if you do not relax now, you do what we call a chaos, you tighten your, your vaginal muscles and it is it is a push and pull. It's as if somebody is raping you and that's not what we really want. So if we would uh, rela relax, then it is much easier to insert the speculum. And like I said, there are different sizes. So we will, we will, the health provider will have judged what size of speculum you actually need. Uh, this is, this is uh, the, the, the time that somebody actually, uh, when you hear somebody say pap papnia is uncomfortable, that is when the, the, the inserting the blades of the speculum and opening them. That's when people feel like they are, they are, it's a bit uncomfortable and yes it it is a little uncomfortable not very uncomfortable and if you're really really relaxed with your health provider it's not so bad now once we fight the cervix like i said we harvest the cells and uh, with a brush or with a, 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 a wooden spatula and then we place them we'll either place them in uh, what we call a liquid, or we will place them on a slide, and then we will fix them with a liquid, and then ultimately we will be, we'll send them to the laboratory for checkup. So it is the laboratory person who will be able to check and, and tell us what they are finding on that cervix. At the same time, when uh, the health provider is doing the pap smear, they, they look around and, and see how the cervix is. So in fact, even as we are sending the report, we will say the cervix looked healthy or the cervix looked very red or the cervix looked this and that. So we will be, have inspected and uh, we will then send it to the laboratory. And after a few days, then the results will come. They'll have checked what we call cytology and the results will come. Now, uh, what results do we expect when we said uh, a pap smear cytology to the laboratory. And the kind of reports go like this. It can come, the reports, the reports sent back to us can be normal, absolutely normal, in which case we'll tell you, go well, come again next year. It can be that there is an infection detected, in which case we shall, the health provider will help you uh, do do the treatment of, of uh, the, the infection. Now, there comes other stages that are now not normal, which is what uh, we, we want to not find, but sometimes we find. Now, there is a stage called ASCUS, A-S-C-U-S, and this uh, means it stands for abnormal self and abnormal squamous cells of undetermined significance. So this one is not quite healthy. It is saying that we have cells that are not 
normal, but we cannot yet call them towards cancer. They are, they are hanging in there. They are not normal. They are not very abnormal. So we get the stage called ASCUS. Then we will get a stage called uh, uh, dysplasia, and dysplasia is in uh, a number of stages. It is in a stage called low grade, and then there is a, a stage called uh, high grade, and then there is a stage called in situ cancer now, and then there is finally a stage called invasive cancer. Now, um, if you do a pap smear at all these stages, there was there was no signs whatsoever. You are just going for routine checkup because you it is time to check up. Then the most the, the most maybe the worst one can get is where it says carcinoma in situ, which means almost totally curable with very, very minimal operation. There can also be invasive cancer, but very early stages, in which case it is uh, possible to treat. So we want, we want to put our legs apart and we want to have the speculum put in and we want the, the cervical cells harvested so that they are, they are, they are declared normal, they are declared uh, Schools, they are declared uh, infected, they are declared uh, uh, dysplasia, whatever. But we want to know in time. So it is, it is good to have um, the, the, the pap smear done. Not, not good, it's, it's really life-saving to have the pap smear done. Now, how do you manage all this? I, I said from the very beginning that in this forum, I will not be giving treatment. I will not be giving management. Suffice it to say that when the report comes, your doctor will discuss it with you. And please don't do a pap smear and forget and expect the doctor to, to, to call you about it. Because sometimes we, we, we intend to call, but we are just human. Sometimes we will forget to call. Sometimes we will, months down the line is when we shall say, oh, did she ever come back for her results? So please, please, wherever you do the pap smear, it doesn't matter where, make sure that you do go and get your results. Get them so that you are told exactly what your report is like and what you should do. Now, uh, how frequently should somebody do a pap smear? Uh, there are some regimes that say you do a pap smear every five years. There are some regimes that do a pap smear every three years. There are some regimes that do a pap smear every year. And all of them have reasons for why they say those years. I tell my women to do a pap smear every year because not only will it catch more frequently, but if there is a problem, it will catch it earlier. Suffice it to say it takes five to ten years for the changes to occur from a normal cervix all the way to cancer. It takes literally five to 10 years. And this, except for people who have uh, immune, whose immunity is low. Other is for normal people whose immunities are normal. It takes five to 10 years to, to, to change from normality, to go through ASCUS, to go through LSI, and to go through high grade and anterior cancer. So there is time, there is, there is 10 years of time okay, minimum five years of time to deal with this thing before it becomes cancer and to deal with it in a very, very easy way. The only people that must, must do a pap smear at least once every year are the people who are HIV positive. But I recommend for people to do, if they can, to do a pap smear once a year. Now, what is the cost? Some people are put off by the cost. But uh, I don't think there is anywhere in Kenya where a pap smear will cost more than 10K. And we are talking 10K for your system, for your body once a year. And it's not even that much, really. It is much less. I'm just putting 10,000 10, Kenya shillings as the upper limit. It shouldn't ever cost much more than that. Now, who does not need to do a pap smear? I said who needs to do a pap smear. Now, let's talk about who doesn't need and uh, I, the, I repeat again, anybody whose genitalia have never touched anybody else, they do not need to do a pap smear. And I reiterate again that I'm not talking about virgins because some virgins have had heavy petting. And heavy petting 
can give somebody a infection of human papilloma virus. The other people who don't need to do it is anyone who's, uh, who has stopped being sexually active. And they have, from the last time they were sexually active, they have done two pap smears <coughs> and they have been declared as normal. If that happens, then the people who have abstained from sex for that long and for two years, two pap smears have declared them normal, then they are, they are the, the HPV would not have hidden in their system that long, so they can stop until such a time as they start being sexually active again. And then uh, other people who don't need it is people whose uteruses we have removed and removed the cervix. When, if, if somebody is removing your uterus for whatever reason, at the end of it, ask them, did they, in case they forget to tell you, did they remove the cervix? Most of the time, if, if it's not cancer that is making us remove the uterus, we, in, in Kenya, at least, the practice is that we will remove the whole uterus and remove the cervix, but leave the ovaries. But there are some times when it is not possible to remove the cervix, technically not possible to remove the cervix. And usually we would tell you that we were not able to remove the cervix and that you still need to be doing pap smears. But confirm with your doctor whether they, when they did their, the, the removal of the uterus, whether they included the cervix in the uterus or not. So it, it is really, I hear people say it is, starts to be done at age, I don't know, 20 what, and stops at age 65. It, it's really not to do with age, it's to do with sexual activity, because this is uh, something that will come if sexually active, and if somebody, your partner, has uh, uh, um, the HPV, and then you also get HPV. And then, of course, the other thing is that uh, people who have many, many sexual partners uh, have even a greater chance than the 80% of getting human papilloma virus. And this means also that those people whose partner has several partners also have a greater chance of getting human papilloma virus. So we are doing this thing for to check whether the cervix has had an infection and is being affected by human papilloma virus, the risk type that make the, can make the cervix go towards cancer. And there is time uh, to catch it before it actually becomes a fatal. Uh, the, 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 you don't want, you really, really do not want to suffer from advanced stage of cancer cervix. It, it, it is a terrible thing. I think I talked about it another time. I'll not go into that again. But it's a terrible thing. You want to catch it. The only way to stop cancer is to catch it, either catch it early for the cancers that don't warn you. Some cancers will just start as cancer small and then get bigger. But this one of the cervix, it is starts as a change, a change that can be quantified over time and a change that you can interrupt at any point and stop it going forward towards cancer. Uh, like I said, I will not tell you how we, we, we treat it, but it, it is possible to treat and cure and even have children after having had those, those early stages of dysplasia we are able to even preserve the fertility ability of the cervix and be able to have children. Now, how do you time when to do pap smear? Uh, we are coming to an end. I am really thirsty, so we are coming to an end, and then we'll take questions. You, you time the pap smear when you're not having a period. Please do not appear when you have a period. Appear like a week after you're dry appear then and don't come the day, two days before you get your next period. So time is sometime, sometime there in the middle to go for the pap smear. And then when you have planned to go for the pap smear, avoid, avoid sexual intercourse for about two days, abstain for about two days before you, you uh, come to do the pap smear. And then, fin then finally, please do not do a pap smear when you're pregnant. The, the changes when you're pregnant in the cells are such that you might be declared to be cancerous and you don't have cancer. 
So unless the doctor advises you that they'll do a pap smear for some signs that they they have done, they have seen when you're pregnant, in pregnancy, do not do a pap smear. So I said, we do pap smear when there is absolutely no symptoms, no signs. But having said that, if you have sex and you bleed, please run and do a pap smear. If you strain yourself doing heavy work and you see a bit of blood, and this is not the time of periods, please run and do a pap smear, run. Because it could be that it is the early signs of, of the cancer starting. Now, if you start seeing funny discharges, discharges that you cannot really, really explain, please go and do a pap smear. Please go and do a pap smear. So funny discharge, bleeding at odd times, bleeding of the ovio, and the women who have reached menopause. If you see yourself bleeding again, please run and let them check where in that system the bleeding is coming from, whether it is cancer. By the time a bit of bleeding happens, it is actually cancer, but it is early. It is early and it is curable. So cancer is still curable when it is early. It is when it is late that it is not curable, any, any cancer whatsoever. So we, we are going to agree that we are going to screen for for cancer cervix. There are many other methods of screening. I was only demystifying pap smear today. There are methods that uh, the, the government offers for screening for cancer cervix, which, uh, and, and uh, they, they are there. They are there to be done. They, they, they are in government hospitals. And even uh, in some NGOs, they are done, and they are good. Uh, suffice it to say, whatever method of screening you use, please screen yourself. Now it is sometimes possible. It is it is possible these days to actually check whether you are infected, whether you are carrying the the bad. I call them the bad. The, we call them the high risk. The high risk uh, human papilloma viruses that cause uh, cancer cervix. So there is a test that can be done. And you can know whether you have human papilloma virus that is high risk for cancer cervix, and then you even be more alert. But even when you do know that you have the human papilloma virus or that you do not have the human papilloma virus, the mainstay is screening that the cells of the cervix are not changing. Because there is nothing the human papilloma virus, nothing else is it, it's going to do to you except change your cervix towards cancer. So whether it is detected, when it is detected, you will make sure you keep doing pap smears. Even when it is not detected, you make sure you keep doing pap smears because the first thing you may detect that there was a problem is by a pap smear. So I think we have agreed that we are all going to do a pap smear. If you want, my tech guy can reset you again uh, a talk we did on, on cervical cancer, which is not very nice. I do not want anybody getting to that level. So let's agree to do cervical cancer. We, we do service our cars every year. Why are we not servicing our systems? Now I'll call my tech guy today. Uh, we have finished uh, shortly. I'll call my tech guy and we can take any questions. Tech guy. is coming as I take water. So I really, really do want people to do pap smears or to do whatever screening you can manage, but screen yourself for cancer cervix. You don't want to get it.
I'm, I'm checking. There was a question from last time, from when we posted. So on the on the part. All right, this is Alice Mbo. Alice Mbo asks, or says, I don't know. Uh, Dr. Jen, there is a lady, uh, cervical cancer stage two, which has, um, which has even affected one of her legs. Due to lack of finances, she can't be treated. Reason being her NHIF has not been paid for 10 months. So, what she what she was told to pay is a 10 month penalty and then pay another two years before her card matures in order for her to to use it she is in pain stigmatized and also she started to produce a bad smell uh yeah i i don't know what to comment i um that's why i'm saying let's not get there Mm. Let's not get there. The, the, and this is this is not um, this is not for the the, the knowledgeable. I, I have university graduates who are dying of cancer cervix. Mm. It, it, it is something I don't know why because for I I don't know why we we've we've stigmatized the the, the sexual organs so much that we dare not talk about them. And then that that lady never need have gotten there. Uh, they, they are, they are, how shall I say, government hospitals that actually for free, I don't know if it's for free, but for a little stipend, will screen somebody. And even even some will do pap smear, leave alone the, the BB and uh, mm. VIA. Mm. So it is, it is, this is what we don't want to get to. And yes, um, yeah, it's not a good thing to have. I do not know how to help because... Uh, that's a policy, um, uh, but the, 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 the trouble is that even the treatment at this stage now is not even to cure, mm. it is to, to just uh, what we call palliative, to, to, to help to ease things. I, I wish we could do pap smear and cure uh, or stop it coming. Yeah. Mm. And the sad part is this is just stage stage two. Yeah, it's unlikely to be stage two. Oh. Yeah, because she's saying it's stage two and it's already a Maybe, maybe when it was diagnosed, it was stage two. Oh, but um, now it has progressed. But even stage two, there are two B, which there's nothing much you can do except help. But if it's stage two A and below, then one can do something about it. So maybe she was diagnosed at that time and because she couldn't afford it, which is very sad because we, we, we should have a policy of affording and not not really watching our people die. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm not political, but there should be a way that Kenyans should be helped. This one is she says, thank you for keeping us educated and informed about ourselves, ma'am. It's not in vain. You're welcome. Thank you. I hope it, it helps. Yeah. Mm. Preach it. Preach it to people. Mm. Uh, this one says, hi. Hi. <laughs> uh, I think this lady was calling her sister of hers or something. Because she's Grace Ndegwa, she's, she says Eunice Ndegwa. So I'm going to assume maybe she's calling her sister or her cousin something. Um, Esther Kabiru says we are here. Um, and she goes on to say, thank you so much, Doc. We really appreciate this great information. You're, you're welcome. So I, I have a question. Yeah. So you've made it clear that um, even without penetration, you can still catch HPV. Yes. So here's a girl. Yeah. Who's um. She's she's beginning to be sexual. Correct. 
to pets. To do heavy petting. To do heavy petting. Yes, at risk. We, we, I've, I've seen a girl at age 18 with cancer cervix. Okay. Then let me continue. Continue. Um, so she hasn't been, she hasn't been penetrated. Yeah. But she's been sexual. Yeah. How are you going to test a girl like that for HPV? Uh, there is a way of uh, sobbing inside there mm. and sending that material to check whether she has the high risk HPV. In the last few years, that is possible. And in fact, it, it is it is possible to swab oneself. One is given the the material, the, the swab from the laboratory, and it is possible to self-collect the material mm. and take it to the laboratory. And they will check for you whether you one has the high risk human papilloma virus or not. But so like I said. Having human papilloma virus tell you, tells you one thing, yeah. that you stand a chance of getting cervical cancer. Mm. The only way you will know whether you are getting cervical cancer or not is by pap smear. Because it's not everybody who gets human papilloma virus gets cervical cancer. But a girl who's been petting heavily we will get human papilloma virus and can still get and can still get cervical cancer. So how do we check her? Whether she has cervical cancer? Yes. Now, yes. if she has HPV positive mm -hmm. and it is persistent, then we'll have to do a pap smear. So there are there are speculums that we do even in nuns. They are very tiny speculums that we check the cervix. Fortunately, uh, the cervix of a little girl, I mean a young person, the, the vagina is nicely tight, so everything is as where it should be. The, we don't even need to open very wide to find the cervix. But for 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 women who have delivered, that's why we use those big ones where we open right to be able to see the cervix. But yes, it is still possible. Even, even lesbians who have never had uh, penetrative sex, we are able to do pap smears on them. So it is possible. But but it's good to know whether or not one has human papilloma virus infection. Sometimes the body will kick it off. Sometimes it will not. But the main thing is, the, the thing that human papilloma virus does is that it changes the cervix towards cancer. Otherwise, we all have viruses floating mm -hmm. around. Mm -hmm. So it's not that we are trying to say you don't have a virus. You could have a human papilloma virus that will give you what or not give you what. Mm -hmm. But uh, here we are talking pap smear where we check is it changing the cervix towards cancer or not. And I forgot to say that the same human papilloma virus is the same one that causes all kinds of cancers. It causes vaginal cancer, valvo cancer, Penile cancer, you know, cancer, oral cancer for people who are who have oral sex, all kinds of cancers. But today we were demystifying the pap smear and requesting people to not die of cervical cancer. Mm. Okay. Esther Kabiro says, Oh my. <laughs> I don't know what's surprising her so much. <laughs> <laughs> Like, like I say, I, I, I am not shy about sexual things. I, yeah. I call them as they are because yeah. it should be the way. Yeah. I, I get I get very saddened by the lack of knowledge in our people. Mm. And then when I meet Western people, the amount of knowledge yeah. they have, yeah. just because they are open about sexual organs, mm. I, I cannot understand what we hide them for because they are there mm. and they are ours yeah. and they are, they, they are there to stay. Mm. Yeah. I think for me, the, the other thing is, is being overly euphemistic. Mm -hmm. In the process, you know, things get lost in translation. You know, because you're not saying things as they are and yes. somebody doesn't quite understand, understand what, we are saying. what you're saying. Yes. So you might as well just call it as it is. Yeah. You know, let people feel a little shy, but at least in the but process... There's nothing saying, to feel shy about. Mm -hmm. you know? A vagina is a vagina. Mm -hmm. A face is a face. A mouth is a mouth. They, they are all part of us. Mm. Some we hide, of course, we don't go showing everybody. Mm. They are private, mm. but they have a name. Yeah. Yes, and they have a purpose. Mm. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, we have finished? I think we have finished. I hope that the ladies will go for those pups. Yeah, please, please, please. If we have done nothing else, yeah. go for pups. It's not, it is, it is not uh, like a, a chocolate, but it's not so uncomfortable either. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's doable. It's doable. Uh, do it. Do it, please. Okay, arrange to go for one. It doesn't matter where. Arrange to go for one. And the main thing, get your results. Get your results. What would you advise young girls? Which young girl? Just young girls. You're not married yet or something. Are they sexually active? Yeah. Are they genitalia to genitalia? Yeah. They do perhaps. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the, the age has nothing to do with the the human papilloma virus. Human papilloma virus is so common, it's like uh, sneezing. Mm. It is that common. Yes. It's, it's, it's there. A lot. A lot. Yeah. And for the for women who are sexually active, they should do it at least once. Mm -hmm. I, I advise once a year. Once a year, yes. Once a year. Good. So go open your legs. Let a speculum be put in. Let the doctor or the health provider see your cervix and harvest and send it to the laboratory. Please go for your results. Then the person, will, you will discuss how to manage if there is anything to manage. But most of the time we tell you this is normal, come next year. So there is good news. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. I think that's it. I don't see any other comments. <coughs> I haven't missed anything. Yeah? Uh, okay. okay. Bye bye. So bye bye. Uh, See you next week. Okay. God willing. <laughs>